Well, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you are on the planet. Um, it's great to be coming at you today from Cape Town, South Africa, with Tony Agbon Casey with me here in, uh, in Cape Town. It's been a fantastic week uh, for the African Energy Week, and we're excited to give you an update on that and, and to unpack some of the opportunities that we've found down here at the southernmost tip, and that's what you'll see behind me here, uh, of, of Africa. So it's, it's fantastic to be on the African continent and, um, and just had some dynamic meetings this week. Tony, I'm sure you'll agree. It's been, it's been a lot going on, but a lot of great meetings. Uh, say hello. Hello, um, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on here today, um, live and direct uh, from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, this, this week has been a, a wonderful week with uh, a lot of um, discussions surrounding um, the just transition for the African continent and, and what Africa truly wants in regards to um, you know, moving uh, the energy narrative forward. Um, a lot of opportunities discussed uh, over the past couple of days, like uh, Clark said, and um, can't wait to start sharing it with everyone. Yeah, thanks, Tony. And, and I found it fascinating, you know, as you come over to the African continent from North America and, and from the, the perspective we have on the transition, ener transition of the energy industry, uh, fascinating to come here where, um, where we hear a lot about the African countries trying to get to their first industrial revolution and and a little bit a little bit of um you know um a, a direct message we've heard here from Africa Tony on really back to the western world on it it's to some extent unfair to expect Africa to not develop their economies with their natural resources um you know which is kind which is kind of in a sense what we're doing in other parts of the world is we're cutting back on those those types of energies. Um, uh, so, how do you how do you see that here? As we listen to the speakers in the last few days, ministers, um, you know, the Secretary General of OPEC was here, all talking about Africa's place in the energy mix going forward. What are your thoughts on that? Thanks, Clark. Um, totally, totally agree with them because uh, you know when you have a continent where six hundred over six hundred million people uh, do not have access to energy uh, proper lighting. Um, you 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 know to to say that they should leave that precious resource like gas in the ground uh, and not you know develop their continent is um, I mean from from an African standpoint uh, it's unacceptable you know they they truly want to um, tap into that natural resource to be able to you know um, have a second industrial revolution you know and and hopefully be able to uh, get like, basically light up the continent. Um, you know, to be able to to be able to um, move this forward, you know, uh, they've talked about uh, a number of various initiatives on the way, um, new discoveries happening in Namibia and, and Angola and other parts of the continent. Um, they're looking at you know the West for technical partnerships for for technologies and and even to a certain degree financing. But I think one of the one of the key message I took away from from this is. Um, the uh, Afrexim Bank um, decided to set up uh, a two billion dollar fund, specifically um, for known as the Energy Bank, uh, which is going to be um, run alongside the African Energy Chamber for strictly African energy projects. Yeah, no, that was exciting announcement, and 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 certainly I know NJ Anuk, who's the chairman of African Energy Chamber. Um, spoke was was very keen on that, um, but but NJ put the he made the theme of this of this whole conference the just transition and yes. and this allowing space for for Africa in a sense to catch up to the rest of the world on on matters of energy and allowing them to build up their economy is a really strong theme that we're hearing here in in uh, not just in South Africa of course but all of the the African nations that many of which are represented here at a very high level. Um, but the African Energy Chamber, of course, has done an amazing job again with this week and pulling together the, the influencers, the, the strongest um, uh, leaders, if you will, in the, in the energy industry here in Africa. Um, it's also interesting, uh, Tony, as we, as we look at um, some of the, the IOCs, the big, big, big players who are changing their approach to Africa, 
they're not necessarily they're in some senses they're exiting some projects but the mm -hmm. but the backfill is coming um from the local community can you speak to that a little bit yes um i think it is um very important for you know africans to own their own narrative and it just happens to be that because of a lot of uh, i guess shareholder or stakeholder pressure on the iocs uh, they've been um, diverse, divesting away from the the onshore assets to to strictly offshore assets, and that has given um, opportunity for local um, local African uh, oil and gas companies to take on those those assets. And again, you know, um, they are looking for partners to work with. They are looking for. Um, financiers to work with to develop and explore more of this, uh, more of their assets. And, um, you know, I, I think definitely uh, to a certain degree, it makes it a, a strong narrative because the money is being made on the continent and it stays on the continent. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's great, Tony. And, and it's been fascinating too, that um, there, there's a passion for developing here and and yet there's still a need for for technical support there's obviously financial opportunities many many um financiers could find a very welcome place here in africa to invest in the energy industry we don't mm -hmm. we can't say that in a lot of parts of the world this is a very uh, open market many of them very open to investment and technical expertise we have with us on this trip um uh, Ken Zilka, who's with Friction Tool Solution. And and Ken, um, I'm going to pull you in here a little bit because you've had some interesting discussions, I would say, with the number of the um, of the influencers and the players in the market who are looking for solutions uh, from, if you will, North America and Europe. Um, and of course, you're the inventor of a, of an, a downhole uh, solution that that saves money and makes makes uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in the process. Ken, Maybe just speak to your experience of being here with us in Cape Town and, and talking to some of the some of the um, the movers and influencers of the projects here. Are you there, Ken? I am. Can you hear me, Clark? Yeah, perfectly. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Sorry about the background noise. Having a little phone difficulty here, and then of course they're doing overnight uh, renovations to this uh, Tiger's Milk Brewery overlooking the waterfront. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they won't be able to show you that. So. At any rate, uh, um, first off, uh, um, Clark, Tony, uh, appreciate everything you've done for myself, my business, um, and sealing uh, this trip for me to come over here. Um, I'll, I'll speak to, uh, you know, Africa has always been um, not front and center, but it, it's been something I've been keeping an eye on for, for uh, about two years now since we've commercialized our product. Um, and uh, with everything going on in Europe now, obviously, and uh, through some contacts, obviously, it, it was a great time to come over here. Um, so I very much appreciate your guys' assistance. Um, anybody chiming in on this call, I uh, highly recommend uh, uh, Clark and Tony. Um, and I'm sure this goes well beyond the uh, African market. Um, to, to, yeah, just kind of speak. I was, I was trying to get, uh, actually trying to get my camera working here so I can take a picture of, uh, you know, get some live video of the waterfront here for everybody. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen at the moment. Um, when it comes to to uh, my expectations on this trip, obviously, we're, we're almost halfway around the world. It feels like it anyways. Um, was to target um, some EMPs and primarily come over here and uh, meet with some potential distribution partners uh, for the different regions in in Africa that are actually active in in uh, with the you know with drilling right now. Um, obviously, I you know uh, mentioned what you talked to about on the so far on the call. There is uh, no shortage of countries um, ready to go. They're looking for investment. Um, uh, to get that off the, off the ground. But there again, um, there's a number of, of regions in, on the continent um, that have active drilling. Um, it would, you know, number one reason why I'm here. Uh, my expectations come down here, uh, you know, obviously through, through the, both years assistance to make that happen. Um, and obviously through networking, there's a couple of CEOs I had targeted and I would have to say over three days, if if uh, if I didn't have great conversations with at least 25 to 30 CEOs, I'm probably calling it short. Um, the condensed uh, um, show that it is, uh, it's smaller. It's nothing like most have been used to, whether you've been at OTC or Calgary when it was hopping pretty good. 
Um, it's just condensed. Uh, the, the, the people here, if, you, if you're wanting to do business in Africa, this is a must visit, must stop. Good. Thank you, Ken. And, and, and so just maybe you speak a little bit to their, their receptiveness to your technology, because I think, you know, I've, what I've heard this week, too, is that uh, Africa is, is, um, is hungry for, you know, not, not to just do things the old way, but to advance technology so that they can produce um, efficiently, effectively, lowering costs and, and, and lowering impact on the environment. Can you speak to the, how, your, how your particular tool and technologies can have been accepted here? So yeah, so um, for those that aren't aware, um, our, currently we, we have a casing um, centralizer that's uh, commercialized, uh, a number of different sizes. We are now, in the, since Q3 of 2019, obviously we can write off 20, 2020 and part of 2021, but we're we, uh, north of 40 clients in Canada. Uh, we got about a half dozen clients in Texas between uh, three different states and growing, and uh, we've been shipping product to Australia to about six different clients, uh, including the IOCs. Um, in Australia, and, and now we're in a we're in a spot with our product. Uh, to speak to it, we actually um, with the design, first of its kind, we got a patent on it. Uh, in multiple countries, waiting for waiting for the patent, and a few more. Uh, we we exploit the negative energy of hole drag, um, which is the most abundant uh, energy down the hole, albeit negative. But we found a way to uh, to exploit it with our our tool design and. And everything we do just eliminates uh, operational issues and, and uh, speeds up time, efficiencies, eliminates having to rot rotate casing to get the total depth um, and so on. So with that said, and, and uh, what we've done, you know, we haven't really had any kind of a marketing campaign, so to speak, um, other than maybe one LinkedIn post um, uh, to get to where we're at today. But, but now we're making a push into the international market and everyone we talk to, um, be it CEOs of the operators, EMPs themselves, um, when it comes to distribution partners, um, it's been well received. Uh, they're all having issues. We, we've had talks where in certain regions here, they're having less than 40% success rate in getting casing landed at full event. Um, so when they look at something that we have, see our track record that we now have, um, it's well accepted. Um, yeah. Good stuff, Ken. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate uh, appreciated spending this week with you and and to be alongside you with a lot of those conversations. And and Tony, now now back as I turn back to you as we look at you know the, the future of 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 energy in this in this continent. And um, you know I've heard some lofty declarations and lofty um, uh, different uh, comments made here about where the world is going with respect to energy production. And as we're faced with an energy crisis today. I heard a group talking about Africa becoming the solution to the world's energy crisis. Um, what, 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 how do you respond to that? And, and how do you see Africa playing that role going forward? Um, I, you know, I, I believe that, uh, I mean, just the, the way, the, way um, the, the whole conference went this time, I think um, it was, I, I think it was agreed that, you know, Africa has to go into COP27 with a plan of its own to say, right. look, this is how we want to transition uh, into renewable or sustainable energy going forward. Um, gas has been included into the, you know, the transition fuel or green fuel going forward. And Africa intends to um, really go hard and, and um, you know, really tap into that resource. So, um, you know, the Africa wants to write its own narrative in regards to uh, whether using fossil fuel or not using fossil fuel. They they all do believe that yes, you know, the climate is changing, <laughs> and uh, you know, a solution needs to be needs to be put in place. And that solution, you know, you, you could tell that they welcome you know technologies like uh, carbon capture, for example. You know, uh, to, during the um, during the first day of, of the conference, Sasol actually signed a, a, a deal where uh, they will be producing hydrogen and also doing carbon capture in, a, in, in as a pilot project for one of their facility. So you could tell that you know um, technologies are being used to uh, uh, mitigate uh, you know greenhouse gas emissions or or, or 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 carbon emissions. You know, so I believe that. You know, Africa wants to join um, the race. You know, to to ensure that um, uh, the, the the climate is in good hands or the environment is in good hands. While at the same time, they want to do it at their own pace, 
knowing that currently the only, I mean, Africa only contributes 3% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the world. You know, calling on a continent that is yet to industrialize to basically um, switch off the taps or turn off the taps is, um, um, it's not seen as, as rational right now. Yeah, very good, very good point. And you, you bring up a great, uh, a great point on ESG. Uh, uh, you know, uh, coming from, of course, North America, we hear about ESG all the time. Um, quite often a heavy emphasis on the E of it when we're in North America. Here in Africa, a heavy emphasis on the S is what I heard. I heard, you know, there, there's, there's a responsibility when we're developing these projects and, and exploiting a lot of gas. There's, there's gas everywhere in this continent. Um, so many of the of the of the countries in the continent are are endowed with with fantastic amounts of gas uh, to produce, but but they're you know mo everybody every African leader I heard spoke um, very quickly about doing it right. They weren't just saying let's go let's go exploit it. Uh, they're go they're saying we we want to look after um, the environment of course, but also the social elements of what what production of natural resources can do for our people. So I heard a lot about education. I heard a lot about women. I heard a lot about access to um, education and, and a, a lot of pieces that were compelling to me because they're, they aren't, this is very real here. They're, they're, they're taking this very seriously. And um, I appreciated hearing that Tony here um, and, and hearing where they're taking the industry and on governance. Um, so many, um, uh, leaders in in the energy industry um, are are very intelligent, thoughtful, smart women who are are leading in executive roles here. So I really like where Africa is going on on ESG and and how they're emphasizing that. What are your thoughts on that, um, Clark? I totally agree with you. Um, I, I I I see a lot of the uh, you know um, the governments really really pushing for uh, companies to not only be environmentally um, um, cautious or, or, you know, look after the environment, but also from a social standpoint, empower the communities in which they operate in. You know, um, you know, you could you could tell that a lot of companies are making that uh, a focus now and are looking to 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 educate um, uh, a lot of the communities. They're looking to involve women. Uh, if you if you remember, Clark, there was a, a panel on uh, w on women in energy where they talked about. You know, women participating in the energy sector, how they can increase the number of women, you know, in 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 the sector, and empower those women to even do more. So, you yeah. know, it, it it was very 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 encouraging, and yeah. um, you know, I think the the intimacy nest, you know, the intimate <laughs> intimate the the small, um, I guess, you know, gathering of 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 the conference made it so intimate in a way where. You could actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, with those leaders. So you, you I mean, I mean, uh, Ken can attest to this. He had a great conversation with the the Minister of Energy for for Gabon, and she, um, you know, let let it be known that they were looking to work with partners like him from Canada. You know, who uh, they believe, you know, Canada has probably the best. Um, uh, I guess uh, standard when it comes to oil and gas exploration and uh, and production. So you know it was definitely interesting to hear yeah. about the ESG and the SDG goals that we, we we're all looking at. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Well, it leads me nicely into um, part of my uh, my volunteer role here. Apart from the work with Rainmaker, which is the day job, but the World Petroleum Congress is coming to Calgary next September. And we were very pleased, Tony and I both worked together to uh, support um, the World Petroleum Council Canada and African Energy Week to sign an MOU this week that would allow that would that would purposefully drive the, the groups to work together on on solutions. And then we look at the World Petroleum Congress's um, uh, tagline, um, you know, I, I proudly have on the back my World Petroleum card. It's about energy transition and and the path towards net zero, yes. when we're and and the achievement of the World Petroleum Congress to get that conversation happening in this particular Congress next Saturday next September was really compelling. And then to hear the message here, Tony, on on the the way Africa wants to develop, they just seem to fit together so well. So very proud to be uh, to be able to. Um, 
to uh, shake the hand of NJ and 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 sort of bind this agreement together, where where there'll be a lot of support from uh, from Canada for Africa, and of yeah. course from the African Energy Chamber for the Congress next year in Calgary in September in in uh, in my hometown. So really proud to be able to do that on this trip. Um, and I think you're right, Tony. There's there's a there's a degree of um, I, I suppose respect or understanding of of Canadian um, solutions. Uh, I often talk about Canada being it's it's interesting when you talk to a lot of companies back home. Um, we are we do have you know a significant number of regulations, and it, you know we don't do anything uh, very very loose in Canada. It's it's highly regulated, and, and we're very careful about what we do in the energy industry. But that actually creates a sharper and sharper. Um, services industry that can come into uh, to other countries and 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 assist with with what they're doing to develop their their industry. So I think that's compelling. I think that you're right that tie um, a tie uh, to Gabon or other other others as they mark. I mean we've we've talked to so many of them this week. Um, yeah. Namibia, uh, Nigeria, Senegal. Um, it just the list Mozambique. Like they're all here. Everyone's here. Yeah. Um, and I missed some. I'm sorry, but it's it's uh, really it's it's all the energy energy countries are here so it's been really really exceptional and you're right as we get ready for cop in um cop coming up here in in cairo and then of course the one after that in in dubai uh there's so much to talk about uh from a global perspective but i think yeah. africa to to wrap this i think africa has a very compelling story to tell where they need to be allowed to to power those those homes of those 600 million people who live without power here and a chance for them to to uh, generate enough power to create an economy and to and to create um the the sort of wealth that many of us enjoy and have enjoyed our whole life yeah yeah agreed yeah agreed so um so tony i think i think that's a nice little wrap on this particular uh week for us um it's yeah. been great to be here with you uh, in this beautiful part of the beautiful part of the earth, I, I mean, if you ever want a beautiful place to come and spend spend a, a couple of weeks, I, I highly highly recommend Cape Town. Um, and and I'm sure there's I haven't been to many places in Africa, but there's many others as well. So um, this has been a great week. Um, we've learned a lot. Um, I guess I'll just check here. I'm not sure how we can do this. I'm asking the team behind the scenes if there's any way to get questions at all, but. But if there's anybody out there that has a question they'd like to for, like to put forth, or Ken, if you had any closing hey. comments, welcome to it. Um, probably the last thing, uh, just listening to yourself and Tony uh, mention opportunities on on the continent here, um, and I think it's all you know from my perspective. What I learned here this in, in this past few days is the big IOCs. You know, there's a big exodus uh, leaving Africa, especially the land land projects. Uh, some of them are keeping their offshore projects, but some are leaving the offshore world as well. Um, and, and, and from my understanding, most of their, their exits out of these JVs uh, was prior to, to what's going on in Europe right now. I would, I would venture to guess that there's a lot of these projects would still be handled by IOC. So there's some pretty attractive opportunities here. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to, to service companies as well, uh, just an example, I'm up against the, you know, the Albertans, the Bakers, the slumber days, and I'm just, you know, one little spot, spot on the world, uh, out of Red Deer, Alberta, and we're making a dent. So don't let, don't let the, uh, you know, the big name scare anybody away from, from this continent. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Ken. Thank you Ken. Appreciate Ken. That. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, so, so Tony, as we, as we kind of wind this up a little bit, I guess the message is, um, you know, uh, you and I have been working now on on bringing companies from all over the world into the African continent for the for the last year or so, year and a half. And um, so glad to have Ken with us. We've had a few other of our clients that we've been we've been talking to um, we've been talking to about coming into the market as well. But we are we are we are going to be perpetually bringing companies into the market. So um, you know, we're 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 interested in talking to Canadian companies or American companies. European companies doesn't matter where they're from actually who yeah. are interested in understanding this market so we want to we want to speak to them I just saw a question come in so I'm just going to check that I think it might have been from Bradley um yeah Bradley Chetty thank you for that for that question beside the question is this Tony uh, besides government considerations should should be also decentralized systems um I, I think I think where where um 
where he's going there, where Bradley, you're going there, I, I believe anyway, is um, th there's many, um, there's many different markets here. And, and we have, we have like 54 African countries, as much as we talk about the continent, um, you know, as you look at uh, the various countries individually, they will open up different opportunities for you. And, uh, and Bradley, I, th I think we met today. And, and I know that I know that you're, uh, you're working with some companies out of uh, or working with some technologies out of Vancouver and Canada that are coming into South Africa and been been doing a great job down here and finding an amazing market. So, um, yeah, Tony, I don't know if you want to want to respond to respond to um, uh, Bradley's uh, comment on that, just about the decentralization of, of the of the different markets uh, leading to opportunities. Yeah, um, I'm trying to wrap my head around that one. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, like like you said, uh, you know, the government needs to continue to create an enabling environment for the private sector to 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 do what it, it must. You know, uh, it, it needs to put in those uh, systems where uh, it's able to attract capital, is able to attract, uh, they're able to uh, attract um, um, foreign um, uh, technologies, uh, for foreign cooperation, you know, um, I, I strongly believe that the, uh, the government are looking to do so. It was being preached today uh, at the at the closing um, panel uh, where, you know, they spoke about um, changing some of the tax laws to be able to, you know, uh, attract, you know, reducing the taxes or, or giving tax breaks to new entrants so that, you know, they can attract um, new companies into the market. Um, so I would say, you know, um, you know, when it comes to the oil and gas sector or the energy sector, you know, um, the, the various energy ministers are doing a lot to reform uh, some of the old policies and laws they have in place uh, in the industry. Excellent. No, I think that's right. And I think it, it does open up a lot of opportunity. So so um, I think that's our main message here to, to all of you listening on LinkedIn. Now we've got got a number of you out there. Um, and for those that will watch this video later, um, very, very interesting, uh, compelling market Africa is one that um, one that is um, uh, certainly worth considering as you look to expand globally. Uh, it seems like a far way away uh, when you look on a map, but it's a tremendously rich uh, market for for so many companies to come in and partner and invest and be, be part of the solutions that Africa is trying to drive forward. So so with that, I'll just close with a, another thank you to the African Energy Chamber. Um, for for inviting us down, Tony, and and for 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 coming down and and uh, and and making sure we had a, a spectacular time and had some amazing meetings for Ken, but for our other clients that we have in our in our in our um, our portfolio that we're representing and talking to companies about here, tremendous opportunities uh, for so yeah. many of them. So we're excited yeah. about, about excited about Africa and and the future here. And we're excited about about us being part of it, and and certainly Rainmakers excited about being part of that that solution going forward. Exactly, exactly. Um, we'd also like to send a special thank you to uh, Centurion Law Group. They they also uh, were a good host. Um, they made sure we had um, everything we needed. They were intricate in um, you know connecting the dots in regards to certain opportunities we we presented. Um, a lot of, in fact, we'd like to thank the continent, you know, for welcoming us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, uh, absolutely. absolutely. You know, like like you say, Clark, uh, Cape Town is a beautiful, a very beautiful city, and I will I would encourage everyone or anyone who's uh, who's feeling like uh, having a, a really wonderful vacation during the the winter time to come down to Cape Town, and um, you know, and I'm I'm sure they would have a blast because we we yeah. have so far, and um, I'm actually dragging. Uh, Clark and Ken back to Canada, but because it seems like they don't want to go back, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony, thank you, and and I will say that we've had a few discussions with the city of Cape Town um, as well while we're here, and and you know the concept of digital nomads. Um, Cape Town is a perfect place to come and work for two or three months. Um, you know, from a nice Airbnb on a beach and see the yeah. penguins, believe it or not. But uh, there's there's um, a great it's a great place to be um, and to and to uh, spend some time, but also work from, um, you know, yeah. we've we've found very easy to do this and stay connected with with home and with business. So um, it's been it's been wonderful. So enough enough bragging of enough uh, unabashed promotion of Cape Town. It's been a fantastic conference. 
uh, and and we want we really thank the organizers and as they've done a great job. So um, thank you as well for joining us for listening in um, uh, online on LinkedIn or or here in the meeting room. I really appreciate you joining and look for the next one um, coming at you very shortly from Germany. So thank you very much for 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 being with us here today and hope to see you soon. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Lark. Have a good one. Talk to you, Take Ken. Care.